This is part of my August theme. I've been talking to mums and particularly mums concerned about kids. This is a topic that came up last week when I was doing some training. It comes up a lot. I find particularly when people are in their own world of doing whatever they do in their own career path, nurses, teachers, police, defence force or people that are very like in a box when it comes to a career and then they're looking at doing renovating and they think, all right, like what qualities do I have? Like how can I possibly transition across from doing what I do now in my day job into being a renovator? And let's go through a few of those things because when I speak to people at workshops, I unravel, <laughs> unmask quite a few qualities that we all have that can take us into the renovation space. So the first thing is let's have a really good look at our personal skills. And these personal skills are actually on seek.com and they're under a little topic that talks about transitional skills. So they are skills that we have in our day jobs or in our daily lives that can really easily transition into making us very capable renovators. I think too often we think we what we can't do, what we don't have, and not enough about valuing what we can bring to the table. So number one is time management. If you are able to keep track of time, um, we lead busy lives, right? If you're a mum of three and you can get those kids to netball, to dancing with their ponytails done, you can get them to soccer afterwards and you can go home, you can cook the dinner, you can clean up, you can have their bags packed for the next day, you've mastered time management and you can take those skills that you take for granted into the renovation space. Research and analysis, there are quite a few people in the renovation space who actually don't go through the renovation on their own, like they actually don't bother with that. So they don't bother doing the renovation themselves, but they will research and do analysis and check out whether deals are great deals for other people. So they're called property finders. There's also buyer's agents. So there is a lot of money to be made if you want to channel your energy into the renovation and property space and think about, okay, what, how can I turn this into a, day, a daily job? So yeah, research and analysis is pivotal part of finding a great property, recognizing a great deal and making sure that you make the most out of that deal to uh, maximize your profit. Administration, don't take for granted the fact that you are able to keep on top of your paperwork, that you can send emails, that you can receive emails, that you're okay on the phone, that you just get stuff done and that you can keep a tidy, organized space pay your invoices on time and all that kind of stuff. So administration is a big part of that. Running the budget and, and working out what a renovation is going to cost to do and then also keeping on top of the payments so that you know where you're at. One trick when, you, when it comes to budgeting for a renovation and actually running the finance during the renovation is just to make sure that you keep a track all the way along the line. So it's not just doing it in the beginning and then adding it all up at the end. You are keeping a track all the way along the line and you should after every large component, for example, the bathroom or the kitchen or whatever, just check in at that point and make sure that you are on target when it comes to your finances and your budget. Renovation also includes going to the bank for loans, bank or somewhere else for loans, but getting money. Sales and marketing. If you've got a good head for sales and marketing, you will understand what the real estate agents will be doing with your property at the end of your renovation project. And that means you will target the demographic really, really well. Like you'll understand the market that you're taking that property to, that you're doing that renovation for and make it easy on your real estate agent. So if you have sales and marketing skills, it's very, very easy to tweak those into the renovation and property space. It's just a matter of valuing your skills and thinking a little bit differently. Creativity, my all-time favourite. All right, all you mums and dads, renovators and decorators out there who just love choosing colours, choosing tiles. I mean, during the training, during the week, this was the big one. This came up the most. And it's a, it's a valuable art and craft and skill and you possess it not everybody does like not everybody has the creativity or enjoys putting things like that together so this is where it comes into this is where it comes into its own when you're talking about perhaps 
buddying up with somebody else to do a project, if you are very, very creative, but you're hopeless at book work and you're just not interested at it at all, if you can um, pally up with somebody who does those things very, very well, who wouldn't know whether a cushion or a throw was a nice colour at all, then that's when you become a powerful team. It often works with um, husbands and wives and friends and, you know, like whoever is jumping into that project. You When you really get down to it, you start to understand that each one of you in that project can bring certain skills and those life and personal skills really matter and they cross over into the renovation space very, very easily. Planning skills. If you're the type to have your calendar all filled out and you know exactly what's going on, then you possess planning skills and good on you because not everybody's good at it. Just checking my comments. Hi, Rachel. Hi, everyone. So not everybody's good at planning. Some people are, some people aren't. Um, it's not my strong point. Planning ahead is not my strong point. I've learned I've had to because I've got a lot going on in property and also in my business. So I've learned to plan ahead because I just can't do things on the fly anymore. Things are too big. So when you're in a renovation, if you're used to doing things on the fly, then you very, very quickly recognize that you need to plan ahead. You need to plan ahead, particularly now with ordering product and being organized with your selections like vanities and taps and all that kind of stuff. You'll need to plan ahead because your builder will need to know what he has to order in for the job to continue. You do not want your build staff to be waiting for you to go and order stuff, right? So planning right now is very, very crucial. There's a shortage on a few products and you do not want your team, when you finally get them, you don't want them waiting around. Listening. Listening is a personal skill. Fabulous when it comes to doing joint ventures, when it comes to learning about renovating, when it comes to education, when it comes to, you know, flexing your muscle in relation to becoming a great property investor, listening, learning, taking in, taking notice of other people, being empathetic of their position, if they're tradies and they're busy and, and you know, listening is just a skill. We just overlook it, but it is an amazing skill when it comes to renovating. Communicating face-to-face, -face. again, something that we take for granted. If you can now listening and you can listen to somebody else's point of view and really take things on board without reacting and you can communicate very, very calmly, you're going to be an amazing renovator when it comes to working with your trades because that's all they expect. When you're running a project, that's what your tradies love. If you'll just listen, if you communicate, in the end, it's not rocket science, guys. I really do think that becoming a good renovator is all about this stuff. It's all about the personal skills you already possess, perhaps don't value, but it's all about bringing those to the business. And these personal skills, these skills that make somebody a great renovator, these qualities, they're not limited by age. If you're 71 or 17, doesn't matter, doesn't make any difference. You may possess these qualities. You probably have at least four of those qualities that I just read through, at least four. Also not limited by gender. Women have equal opportunity in the renovation space to get this going. I have so many students where the women lead the way and their husbands say, okay, off you go, do so with my blessing. I'm not going to pick up the paintbrush. I'm not going to meet you on site. It's really not my thing. I'm just going to go to work and do my, my thing, what I like to do. You go run the renovation, honey. Let me know how it goes and how much money we make at the end. Off you go. And quite often a partner male or female, will let the other partner run ahead and kind of prove that they can do it before they'll engage and get excited. That happens. That's okay. But the beauty is it is absolutely, you know, we're of equal standing in a renovation project. Age doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. And nor does your previous experience in renovating or building. You can take all of those personal qualities that we talked about just before on the slide before. You can apply them to your project and you get better in a heartbeat. All you need is those personal qualities and a willingness to learn and a willingness to have a bit of a crack. So if you're thinking about it, guys, you've got this. You can. And also your young um, your young humans, the young humans in your family, your beautiful kids, 
Remember, I'm not their mum. If they're thinking about getting into the market and they're, and they're absolutely terrified about starting, if they think they don't have enough money, well, I just spent an hour and a half talking to an amazing man who specialises in property that is on the market or he finds for under $200,000, guys, Good, healthy property under 200000 So I think, you know, a lot of this is just changing our mindset about what's possible. It's also changing our limiting beliefs on what we can do ourselves and not properly valuing the life skills that we bring to renovation, to the renovation space. So have an awesome day, guys. That's it from me. Thanks, everyone who joined me. I will see you every Tuesday at 12 midday for my as Maureen said, my pearls of wisdom. Thanks, Maureen. Yep, see you next week, 12 o'clock. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye.